Hi, everyone. I hope you've been having fun learning bridge, and I hope you had fun playing those hands and playing that kind of mini bridge over the last you know week or so. It's a really good game, and it's one anybody can play. But if you're really liking bridge, and you're thinking, gosh, there's got to be more to it. Well, you're right, there is. It's the bidding. It's that piece that we haven't talked about at all yet except a little tiny bit to tell you what you're trying to do in the bit. So I hope that you are ready for it. For me, um, the bidding is kind of exciting because you have to learn how to communicate with your partner and you have to interpret what the opponents are telling to you. And then you have to envision, you know, what does partner's hand look like based on the information they've given me. And part of what you put into that is, how have you learned that the suits normally split up? You know, if somebody usually has six or seven of one suit, not very often. So you factor all of those things that you've learned by playing hands and looking at hands into the information you get and try and come up with something that's uh, pretty close. Well, let's get started. Today, we're going to learn how you what we call open bidding and then responding after partner has opened in a minor suit. Now remember, what suits your minor suits? Diamonds and gloves. Here we go. Bidding is the conversation between two players, you and your partner. You and your partner are trying to communicate with each other and your opponents are trying to do so as well. And the two things that you are trying to talk about your hand are the strength of your hand and the length of your suits, okay? The length, when we talk about talking, uh, describing the length of your suits, it's more than just the length of one suit. You're trying to give partner a picture of what your entire hand looks like, how many cards you have in specific suits. And then of course we have some priorities in the information you give because, well, because we do, right? So here we go. The dealer, the person who dealt the cards at, has the first opportunity to start the bidding. And each of his bids would consist of a number and a suit, or it could, of course, be no trump. And you're always, for purposes of beginning bridge, you're going to be starting at the one level, at one of some suit. Each new bid must be higher than the previous bid. We'll talk about that in a moment. And bidding ends after one player has bid a number in a suit and the next three players in succession have bid pass. Okay. The suits have a rank in the following order and it's only for the bidding. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, playing the hand out or scoring the hand or anything. It's just a rank for follow for order. Ooh, excuse me. It's just a suit rank for following the order in the bidding. Clubs is the lowest suit, diamonds is next, then hearts, spades is the biggest suit, and then no trump is highest, all right? So clubs is lowest, diamonds, hearts, spades, no trump. Now you might have wondered what those little boxes on the edge of your table are. Those are called bidding boxes. And we use those to help us keep track of how the bidding goes. Yours might look a tiny bit different than this, but this is the general, most of them follow this general format. If you look at the right-hand side of the box, you see one club, and then it goes one diamond, one heart, one spade, one no trump. So that's our rank order of suit. If you have trouble remembering that, uh, it's alphabetical, except for no trump. C, D, H, S. Okay. Clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades, no trump. So let's just look at this sample auction that I put on the board over here on the left. And let's suppose that South was the dealer, and you don't know why they might make these bids, but just suppose, and South bid one diamond. So South, what you would do, and I want you to kind of do it, is put your thumb on one diamond and take one diamond and, and one club pull them out of the box, and then put them on the table directly in front of you so that it's easy for your partner to see, okay? West, I want you to take out a pass card and put it down. And of course, you know, in a real game, you don't necessarily have to pass, but you often do. 
and then north. If you look at your box, what I'd like you to do is pull out one heart and everything behind it. One heart, one diamond, one club, and then just stack them up so that all that's visible is that one heart there. And east, I would like you to pass. Now, if you look back in your box, after that one heart bid was gone, so everybody kind of turn it around so everybody can see, one club and one diamond were no longer available. So if, for instance, east, if you wanted to bid clubs, you would have had to have gone to two clubs because once that one heart bid is made, any bids that are lower in rank than hearts are not available. So you would have had to have gone to a higher level to talk about a suit of your own. But south, you would like to tell partner that you have some spades. And if you look, one, you can still bid one spade because spades are higher in rank than heart. So now pull out one spade and you're going to pull out all the cards behind one spade as well. I'm going to stack them up neatly so that all is visible as your one spade bid and your one diamond bid. See how it's positioned in this graphic? Then west is going to pass. And now north, what I'd like you to do is bid two spades. And again, you're going to pull everything out behind it. And notice that you can see your original one heart bid and your two spade bid. And then let's say South says, I really like spades and I have a really good hand and bids four spades. So they bid four spades. After four spades, West passes, North passes, and East passes. So we had a bid followed by three passes. And we would say that was our contract. Who is the person that bid spades first? Now, so South is the declarer. If we have a declarer, what does that mean about North? He's going to be dummy, right? But let me point out, excuse me, one other thing. So South, as declarer, you're going to be responsible for playing your cards and the North cards. And how many tricks is South going to be trying to win, everyone? Ten, right? Remember, it's always book plus the number you bid. Uh, you might be curious about those other things in your box, that A, and that might be an S in there, a red card with an X, blue card with a double X, Ooh. that um, the two, the A and the S, you won't need for a while. Those are special bids that, or special indications that we'll talk about. That red card with the white X, you won't need that for about, oh, three or four months. And the blue one with the two white Xs, you won't need that one for about six years. So for right now, you can kind of ignore those. If you want to take them out and put them towards the back of your box or underneath your box, you can. Just so what we're going to be working with in these first few classes are those numbers one through seven. Why didn't we go higher than seven? Because remember, it's six plus the number you bid. We only have 13 tricks. You're going to be concerned with that one club through seven no trump and your pass cards. Okay. So remember your priority of contracts. The priority of contracts is first, we'd like to find a fit and major suit if possible. If not, we're going to think about no trump. Last choice is minors. So what will happen is the person who dealt the cards has their first opportunity to bid. If they do, they'll count their high card points, put their hand into suits, they're going to look at their distribution and the number of high card points they have. If they don't have at least 12 high card points, they will say the word pass. And then the bidding will go to their, right, their left hand opponent and left hand opponent will have an opportunity to bid. They don't have at least 12 points. They're going to say the word pass. And then it goes to everyone. If no one has 12 points, for right now, we'll just re -deal. Okay. If you do have 12 points, you are going to bid. And the first thing you look for is, could I bid one of some major and let partner know that I have a long major, which we describe as five or more cards. So, I've got my 12 points. I'm going to bid. First thing I look for is do I have five or more cards in hearts or spades? If I do, I am going to open my major. I'll bid one heart 
And what you would be telling your partner I have is I have at least 12 points. I have at least five hearts. If you bid one spade, you'd be saying, partner, I have at least 12 points and at least five spades. Now, suppose that you had five cards in both suits. You had five hearts and five spades. You're going to bid one spade. High five, the highest in rank. So with two five card suits, open with the highest in rank. High five. If one of your suits was longer than the other, like you had six of one, five of another, then typically what we would do is open our longest suit. I've got my 12 points. Don't have five cards in a major suit. Ugh. Well, in our priority of contracts, our next bit would be no trump. But I open no trump. The open no trump is a very, very specific bid. You would need to have 15, 16, or 17 high card points. No voids. What's void? No cards in the suit. No singletons, which is one card in the suit. And at most, one double. Okay. That's called a balanced hand. Balanced hand, no singletons, no voids, and usually no more than one double. Now, if you want to take a break here, and take a deck of cards and figure out what that looks like. I can give you a hint. There's only three ways that the cards can be distributed in someone's hand to meet that criteria. So that's kind of an interesting concept. There's only three ways that we can have what we call a balanced hand, three distributions of the cards. To open two no trump, you could open two no trump. Remember, we're always on, only going to open one of a suit for right now. But you could open two no trump if you had 20 or 21. That's not very likely, is it? That's more than half the points in the deck. Or if you were lucky enough to have 25, 26, 27, you could open three no trump. That would be an amazing game. Well, I've got my 12 points. I don't have a five card major. I'm not balanced. All right, we're going to open a minor. Think of opening a minor as just a way to kind of start the conversation with your partner. You want to let your partner know that you have some high card points, that you don't have a major, and that you couldn't open no trump. To open in a minor suit, one club or one diamond, you only need three cards in the suit. This part, I've given you some mnemonics here, but you just really have to kind of remember. If one minor is longer than the other, usually open your longest minor. If they are equal in length, then with three, three in the minors, you would open one club. A mnemonic that might help you with that is a club has three petals on it. If you're four, four in the minors, you would bid one diamond. Mnemonic, let me remember that is our four sides. And of course, if you're five, five, it's high five, right? Highest in rank. So it's, let's go back for a second. So for five and five, we're going to open the diamond. High five, because diamonds are higher in rank than clubs. So let's do some practice for opening the bidding. North is going to deal the cards. Each player sorts their hand into suit, count your points, and listen to these instructions carefully. Don't start yet. When they're ready, North is going to place their hand face up on the table and share how many high card points he holds and what he would bid. So like I have 13 high card points and I would bid this. Next, East is going to share his and then South and finally West. So you're all going to say what I would bid. Now, what's going to happen is some of you aren't going to have 12 high card points because there's only 40 points in the deck. So if you don't have 12, what I'd like you to do is say, I'd have to pass. I don't have enough high card points to open the bid. Everybody's going to go, oh yeah, right, good job. But then I want you to say, but if I had held 12 high card points, this is the suit that I would have opened. Okay? So I want everybody to 
think about their high card points and recognize whether they had enough to open the bidding or not. But if you did not have the opening bidding, I still want you to look at your shape, the shape of your hand, your distribution, and decide what you would have bid. Okay? If time allows, you can shuffle and deal out new hands. We'll take 10 minutes or so and do this and let you see how many you can think about. Have fun. Remember, your priority of contracts, majors, no trump, minors. Do the math. Make sure you have enough high card points for the bid you're going to be making. Look at the length of cards in your major and your minor suit. Look at your distribution. Make sure you, if you're up and thinking about no trump, if you don't have any singletons or voids. And note your opening bids on the chart on page 19. And it'll give you a little practice so we can talk about it. There's a chart in your manual on page 18 if you need that. So let's have fun. Give you about 10 minutes or so. That was pretty fun, wasn't it? How'd y'all do? Pretty good? Yeah. Let's, well, let's talk about what happens after your partner has opened the bid. Okay? You and your partner are trying to discover if you have a fit. And you do that by identifying a suit in which you hold eight or more cards between your combined hands. Remember, your focus is finding a major fit, a fit in hearts or space. And then you're going to do the math to determine if you have enough high card points to try for that game bonus. Now, what were the points for game? Do y'all remember? We wanted to find game. We needed around 25 or 26 high card points to think about game in a major suit or in no trump, about 28 or 29 in a minor suit. But remember, finding that minor fit is your last priority. So basically, do we have a fit, especially in a major suit, or could we play no trump? And do we have around 25 or 26 points between our two hands? You and your partner are going to be telling each other how many high card points you hold. So, to make a responding bid, you only need six high card points, so you're almost always going to be able to talk to your partner about your bid. They had to have 12 to open. You only need six to make a responding bid. We're going to specifically be talking today about making a responding bid after a partner has opened one club or one dime. You're looking, do we have enough high card points for game or slam? And then here's our levels. Just talked about this, but in the graph, okay? Responding to a minor, our first priority is a major. Now, remember, we know that partner did not have five cards in a major suit when they opened one club or one dime, because opening a major would have been their first priority, and we're looking for an eight-card fit. Opener could have four. They could have four hearts or four spades. So as a responder, I only need four cards in a major to mention a major. I only need six high-card points and only four cards in a major suit. If I have four cards in a major suit, I'm going to bid it at the one level. If I have five cards in a major suit, I still, I just bid it at the one level. If I have four in both majors, I have four hearts and four spades, bid one heart. We call that four on the floor, bid the lowest in rank, right? If I have two five-card suits, high five, I'm going to bid the highest in rank. So four and four, on the floor. Five and five, high five. I have my six points, but I don't have four cards in the major suit. Hmm. Well, am I balanced? No voids, no singletons, most one doubleton. If I'm balanced, I could bid one no trump. Now remember, you're not opening no trump. You're responding to partners. So you're uh, point ranges have changed. Partner would have had to have 15 to open a no trump, but you only need six to respond. 
And when you bid no trump, you're denying four or more cards in a major suit, and you're telling partner that you're typically balanced. So one no trump shows a balanced hand, no four card major, six to 10 points. With two no trump, I show 11 or 12. And with 13 to 15, I bid three no trump. Remember your balanced hand, no singletons, no voids, and usually no more than one double. Well, I have my six points. I don't have a four card major. I'm not balanced. Oh, well, minors. I'm going to have to bid a minor. And the first thing you would look for is do you have a fit with the minor that partner in? They only promise three. Cards, right? So we're looking for an eight card fit, so I'd have to have at least five. When at your first opportunity to bid, you bid the same suit as the suit that your partner opened, we call that a raise. The fact that you raise confirms a fit. The level at which you bid talks about the strength of your hand. So if you raise to the two level, you show six to nine high card points. If you raise to the three level, you're showing 10 to 12. So if partner opened one diamond and I bid three diamonds, I would be saying, I have a fit in your minor suit. I have 10 to 12 high card points. Now we have something that happens that feels a little strange, especially when you're new. This is a trust me. As we go further along in our bidding, you'll understand more about why later. But if you have 13 or more points and a fit for your partner's minor, and this is going to hold true for majors as well. We don't really want to play our final contract in a minor suit, right? We don't get many points for that. So what we do is we bid an unbid suit. Excuse me. Typically, uh, the minor. And partner must bid again. Once I've bid, they must bid again if I have changed suit. So this gives me an opportunity to find out more about their hand by bidding a new suit. I'll go back later probably and raise partner's minor. But this is just, uh, we call it a temporary bid, temporizing. It's just kind of um, a little tool that we use to get more information. Now, one thing I want you to notice, and I'm going to go back a little bit on my slides, but notice that when we raised partner, we limited the number of points we had. When we raised to two, it was six to nine. Raised to three, 10 to 12. When we bid no trump, we limited the number of points that we had. Six to 10, 11 to 12, 13 to 15. Anytime you bid no trump or raise, partner's going to have a pretty good idea about the strength of your hand and the strength of their hand because they're looking at it. And they're going to be able to decide if they think game is possible. When partner bids a suit and you bid an unbid suit, we call it a new suit, you didn't limit the amount of points you had in your hand. When they opened a minor and you bid a major, it was six or more. When they opened a minor and I bid the, the other minor or a new suit, it's six or more. So those bids are what we call forcing bids. Partner must talk to us again. They got to tell us something else about their hand. But I haven't said how strong I am yet. We're getting down to the dregs now. We have our six points. We don't have a major. We're not balanced. We can't raise partner. Ugh. We bid the unbid minor. Uh, if we bid over one club, if we bid one diamond, we promise six or more points, four or more diamonds. If we bid a new suit, an unbid suit at the two level, now we're not talking about skipping a level of bidding, just if partner opened a diamond, I wanted to bid clubs, I'd have to go to two. There's a little thing in bridge about that because that's forcing. And we're going to make partner bid again. We need a little bit stronger hand to make them bid again at the two level. We need 10 or more. Bidding a new suit at the two level promises 10 or more high card points. That's probably not going to change um, at your first opportunity to bid. That 
will not change your entire bridge career. So that's something you can just keep in mind. When you bid a new suit at the two level at your first opportunity to bid, you are promising 10 or more high card points and almost always a five card suit. All right. If you get down and you say, I don't have that, I don't have that, I don't have this, well, you're just going to bid on that. That's kind of your fallback position. All right, we're going to practice. You've got some uh, hands on pages 23 and 24. I want you to work together as a table. Notice on page 23, the opening bid is one club. On page 24, opening bid is one diamond. Okay? Work with your table. Review the hands and figure out what your responding bid's going to be. Okay? Remember, note your answers in the charts in your manual. We're going to go over them. Majors, no trump minor is your priority. Do the math. Think about your high card points when you're making a bid that says I have exactly this many points. Look at the length and number of cards in your major and your minor suits when you're deciding. Use the chart on page 22 if you need. That'll help you a lot. And I'll be back. Let's see how we did. Here we go. On hand one, partner opened the club. I had at least six points, and I believe I would bid one heart. It's a four-card major. It does not matter that your spades are better than your hearts. If you're four and four, on the floor, lowest in range. Number two. I have 11 high card points. I do not have a four card major. I am not balanced, can't bid no trump, but I can raise partner's minor. So I would bid three clubs to show the strength of my hand. Remember, three clubs shows 10 to 12. Number three, I have 12 high card points. I'm going to bid. I don't have a four card major. I'm balanced. I don't have any singletons, no voids, and no more than one doubletons. As a matter of fact, I don't even have a double. I'll bid two no trump. Remember, when you're bidding no trump, you also need to talk to partner about the strength of your hand at the same time, just like when you're raising. Two no says I have 11 or 12. Number four. I only have five high card points. So sad I have to pass. Remember, you need at least six high card points to respond. Number five, 11 high card points. Do I have a major? Oh boy, howdy, I have a major. I love this one. I'm five and five, so I will bid one spay, highest in rank. High five. Number six, well, I have nine high card points. I'm going to bid. I do not have four cards in either major. I am not balanced. I don't have a fit in partner's clubs, but I do have a long diamond suit. So I will bid one diamond. Any questions on those? Okay. Let's look at the next one. One diamond was the opening bit. Again, I have six high card points. First thing I look for is a major. Do I have one? Yep. I'm going to bid one heart. Four on the floor. It does not matter that my spades are better than my hearts. Whenever you are bidding, what you choose to bid talks about the shape of your hand. Level typically would talk about strength. Okay? It doesn't, your bids don't say anything about the strength of the suit. Number eight. All right. I have 11 high card points. I do not have a major. Uh, I do not, I'm not balanced. I don't have five diamonds, so I would bid two clubs. Remember that two club bid promises at least 10 high card points and usually five clubs. Hey, I got them both. Number nine, I have 12 high card points. I do not have a major. I am balanced. I would bid two no trump. Number 10, Only five points, but no, I've got some diamonds. That's great. I'm just going to pass. Hope partner can take enough tricks. I don't have much for them. Number 11. 11 high card points. 
I have a major, as a matter of fact, too. High five. I'm going to be the highest in rank first. Number 12. I have eight high card points. I do not have a major. I'm not balanced. Oh, but I've got five diamonds. I can raise partner. When I raise, the fact that I raise denies a major. A four card major. Tells partner I'm not balanced. And the level at which I bid talks about my strength. So I'm going to bid two diamonds. Notice how um, I went through all of these, right? I'm sorry, do y'all have any questions about those? No? Okay. When I went through those, the first thing I always talked about was, did I have a major? If the answer was no, I thought about no trump. And if I wasn't balanced, then I went down to minors. But once I found a major, I didn't have to think about the rest of it. Right? I didn't have a major. I had no trump. Great. I didn't have to think about the rest of it. It's really just that priority. And when you um, are going through it in your head, you don't have to remember every single piece, every single minute. You just have to remember your priority. Once you hit something, you're done. All right, time to play. You've got some boards on your table. You're going to be practice bidding, opening a minor, and responding with partner. Think about your priority of contracts. Think about your strength. Try to think, if you can, about a good rebid. What's that? Your second bid. So, you know, your concentration is always going to be about did we find a fit. So think about what your second bid might be, if you have a chance, to tell partner more about your hand. 